Evening, how's it going? So, it's been a while since we've done one of these. Um, now, first of all, there's a wee bit of background I'm just going to touch on. I don't want to go into it too heavily. Um, but, basically, when the, I kind of mentioned this in previous videos, but just to, to continue on in case you haven't got up to speed or whatever, but when the net buy bonus came in, long story short, we had a loose thousand pounds in the household that... I basically came as my missus and listen, you can't really lose. This is a net buy thing on, I kind of know what I'm doing with this. And to be honest with you, it's probably one of the worst things I've done for my own personal portfolio because just injecting basically much more money than I have ever put into my portfolio in any one deposit and taking my deposit complete level to a different uh, price category altogether than what I've ever managed before overnight in essence and also put myself under a time constraint to have that money withdrew quite quickly um i made some bad made some bad trades but all the people i bought they were all turned out amazing and i've kind of spoken about it before already but i don't want to go into it too much detail but we basically went through a little string of buying mertens he got second place two treble match days in a row or, you know something like that anyway and then we went into Cramerich. And then got rid of him when he was like a pound five. I basically bought him and sold him within an hour, and then he went up. You know, he's at one fifty five now. But Chris just under two pound right before his kind of pop and go, and Rodrigo Moreno and eh, who else? Um, Mertens, Rodrigo, Oxley Chamberlain. We just had a lot of money in him along with. Uh, somebody else as well I can't remember but anyway I've basically now managed to clean all that up for a, when you take the actual net buy bonus away the actual profit on it was like £30 from a thousand or something like that. <laughs> it was pretty poor but the the actual net buy return on it you know meant that you know hey, it's free money so I managed to finally get the portfolio back down to really just my money and what I've been turning and flipping around, okay? Now, if you're new, sorry for the kind of babble to get you going, right? But if you're new around here, we'd, the portfolio is basically ran on a couple of different strategies, and that's for partially your entertainment and partially just my diversification in, in terms of strategies, you know, um, where I put money and how and this kind of thing. So the fantasy football strategy was one we came up with, like, at the back end of last season. <laughs> And we've did really, really well with now. We've managed to basically, what we slowly did is we've made amazing profits in guys like De Bruyne, Joanne Jordan, Pjanic. You know, we had an amazing midfield that all went and grabbed PB and dividends. Goretzka, who we still hold spoilers. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, I mean, Moussa Dembele probably last time. Jason Denier, uh, the goalkeeper last time, I think might have been Ederson. And along with Denier, we had De Ligt and De Jong and who was the other defender? It escapes me. I think it was a right back. Doesn't really matter. So basically, guys, what we did is with all the positions that were in profit, we either sold them or withdrew the money from the strategy. Um, and that's just the way I'm going to define it, just to keep everything simple. Where I'm telling you, I bought some of him or I withdrew that money, this, set and the other. So I went through all my transaction history and worked out, you know, that was removed from the strategy. That's just basically the, the banner it goes under or it was consolidated further into the strategy. So this is basically the team that we have now, okay? So as you can see, it's uh, it's not quite a team anymore. So we basically lumped a bunch of our money into Goretzka. Uh, we've left Ronaldo as is. We've bought some Tonali within the last week or so, and we bought a bunch of Sinchenko. Um, just with his injury, we got him at a good price type of thing. Could have got him a bit cheaper. I was a bit slow on that one, but still got him at a good price. If you look at what he's trading today, certainly. And that's basically where we're at now. So the next couple of videos that follow on for this, and we're going to be, um, we're, we're going to be basically building the team back again for the second half of the season to roll into the Euros because the squad that we've just liquidated basically, and I've sold them all. Basically, over the last since since the last time we did one of these videos, we've been selling in dribs and drabs. I managed to catch peaks on quite a lot of them, like JJ, Joanne Jordan. I pretty much peaked out on him uh, when he got over the two pound mark. De Bruyne, we got um, relatively we sold him relatively high on what he trades at more than what he trades on the now anyway. Pjanic, we did really well on. Uh, and De Jong, we managed to, we had De Jong at like 205s where we bought him and I think we sold him at maybe something like 218, 215, something like that. There was a little bit of cream in it, not very much, but he had picked us up some goals and assist dividends. Um, so that was overall a, a, a decent enough trade. Delict, uh, De, Delict Denier were both badly timed purchases. I still buy, stand by Delict and I'll probably go and get him again. Dembele did okay. Um... But basically the idea was get these players into strong positions and then consolidate them into the remaining 
amazing positions that we had, you know, and Goretzka was just the one that stood out head and shoulders above all else as being so underpriced. My average cost on a hundred of them was uh, uh, one pound twelve, and before that, our average cost on the fifty, the first fifty shares we bought was on ninety two pence. So we had a lot of him in a good position for a long time. He was bubbling under the surface, and then we just went and dumped heavy on him, and he did amazing for us PB wise. So again, if you're new around here, these are the main principles for the fantasy football strategy that we run, okay? So I take a note of the outlay and I basically if I deposit money or I inject money into that strategy from elsewhere, whether it be my direct pocket or maybe I sell up another position and bring it in, then I update that outlay column and I've only updated it today because the last time we'd updated it was like end of November and it was like £500 or something. And as I mentioned, we'd made some trades and some moves and whatever as well. Um, so that's where we're sitting at the now. In terms of dividends capture, this is the complete list ever, right? So this is the back end of last season when we were testing this strategy out and when we were working out what we wanted to do and all that type of stuff. Um, summer media, and then this is this season right now. I find this list pretty incredible for how much we've bagged money-wise and just how good the picks we've made have been, you know? So you don't need me to read, the, read this whole list out to you. You can scan through it and catch the big amounts and see who's been winning them. But you'll see all the players we've, we've, we've held. And we've had other strategies running alongside this, like an RB Leipzig strategy. And you also know how well all those guys have done. And we also had um, just random big holds. Um, and again, you'll know how well they've done if you've been watching the channel, keep up to date with the videos. But basically the PB um, and the IPDs combined so far for this season, just on this strategy, is £40.11. And as you can see the outlay there, it was just over £400. So that's like 10% of outlay basically back in dividends in that period of time alone. Um, just from you know, IPD, uh, pardon me, yeah, IPDs and um, some media, mainly from Ronaldo, he's the only one we've really had grabbing media, pardon me, and um, obviously we've had some good PP ones on match days, and, oh, sorry, that kind of thing as well, and uh, this is the profit and loss for it all, so as you can see, the outlay is 43209, our current market value, and you've seen the team at the beginning, so you can do, you know, I'll just show you the portfolio. So this is the entire portfolio, of course. We've got Baptiste Santa Maria, who's not linked into uh, the strategy in any way. He's a separate entity. But otherwise, the other four players there, this is the entire... You know, you can see in the top left there, five players. This is the entire portfolio. Its market value goes in at 8, 6, 8 and 10 pence. We then remove 2% commission, of course, because if we were to market sell it today, that is the best price we would end up with, which is £850.74. So when we then remove the dividends off our liability because that's basically the um the way that we balance off the dividends in a strategy. Whether you know in one way, shape or form these dividends will compound onto the profit, whether we're removing that from a strategy altogether, or sometimes as you've seen I maybe just top up on the goalkeeper um position that we've got. You know, maybe if I've got thirty seven of the goalkeeper I'll top them up to forty, forty to forty five, you know, whatever. So in either way, shape or form it's um it's getting factored into compounding interest in the portfolio in general. It's not getting accounted as um, fresh capital, if that makes sense. And you can have your own opinion on it if you like, but that's just the way I do it because not all dividends, if any, really are being compounded directly into this strategy. Nine times out of ten, it's coming out of the strategy. So just to keep the maths all nice and clean and rather than tracking every single minute penny of every dividend that gets one, that's just the umbrella I put it under again. So we've got 850.74, the current market value, minus the 2%, minus our outlay, which is outlay in the top left, minus the dividends. So we've got last season's, the summer media madness, and then this season so far gives us a net profit of £477.14, which versus the actual outlay in the top left is 110% profit. And I say we've started running this, I think, for the last eight weeks of the previous season, which would have taken us into something like April or whatever. So we're looking at the fat end of eight months, basically three quarters worth of trading and um, you can go back and look at the videos you'll see how we've done that you know it's not been too spectacular it's been very obvious and I <laughs> two videos telling you <laughs> exactly what we're doing and again the great thing about the channel guys in the videos that I love so much is you guys are great when interacting in the comment section you give me what you think and different other players and you know we speak about things all the time which is which is great but I just wanted to give you this update on exactly how we're doing in terms of the fantasy football strategy and the next video will be us adding making additions back into the strategy with fresh bodies fresh players um 
We're going to probably go with around £40 a player to start off with and build it from there. Again, if you go all the way back to the beginning, I think we started off with £110. And it's a combination of successful trading, dividends and frequent small deposits into uh, into an overall strategy covering defenders, midfielders and attackers. Okay. So um, thanks a lot for tuning into the video tonight, guys. If you're new around here, like, share, subscribe, retweet, all that good stuff, guys. Get involved in the comment section below. Stay out of trouble, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.